Florida Gators are one in one. We're going to head into Tennessee week, but first we're going to keep talking about this win. We're going to keep celebrating this win because a win is a win and they deserve their attention here on Locked on Gators. You are Locked on Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Monday, and for the first time this season, happy victory Monday for the Florida Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports, Giants Country, NFL 33. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And new customers, bet $5, get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Now, to talk about this Florida Gators game versus McNeese State, I said this on the live show post game because there were comments about it. And obviously Twitter is just, you know, it was McNeese State. Who cares? Here's the thing. That's a bad approach to have. Okay. I understand it's McNeese State. I understand Florida's supposed to kick the crap out of them. Doesn't matter. You can still go into this game and take away the positives. Take away the very few negatives and just just enjoy that hey the florida gators got a win like you lost a utah game that you were the underdogs in that you i still think florida should have won they came out super flat they played a fine game for the most part except for they shot themselves in the foot but hey you lost that game as underdogs that most people did not think you were going to win you won this game that you were supposed to win Now you have Tennessee that a lot of people think you're going to lose, and we'll talk about that later in the week. But enjoy the win. Like, it's okay to acknowledge, yes, it's McNeese State, but we can still enjoy that the Florida Gators are back to 500. They're one-on-one. They got in the win column. We We can enjoy that, okay? The offense was about as consistent as you can possibly be. And I don't even mean consistent in the sense of, yeah, they they just did what we were supposed to, what we expected to do. They did like they were just like run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, pass, run the ball, run the ball, run. The ball. They just did what they really should do more often because it's crazy what happened when the Florida Gators run the football, right? Crazy. Offensive line, solid job. Would like to see them get a little more in sync with some things. Kingsley Aguakan will be back next week, hopefully. I know that he was kind of game time-ish and with most players that were even questionable it was like yeah we're just not even gonna push it which i understand keep guys healthy again this was mcneese state this is a game you're supposed to blow them out in and you did blow them out in. like you did your job there's like that's great guys who were not healthy shouldn't have played i will say for me one of the biggest things i loved about this offense first off the running game was killer like just trevor Etienne and montrell johnson just they did what they can do which Hopefully, Florida and Billy Napier are like, oh, let's 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 keep trying to do this thing. I loved getting the ball to Trey Wilson, um, Eugene Wilson the third, whichever you want to call him. It was nice to see offensive play calling open up a little bit. Uh, not entirely, but it opened up a little bit. And I think that was important because for so long the conversation has been, you know, Florida kind of just does the same things. They had a wrinkle very rarely here and there. Against McNeese State, we saw a a wildcat sweep where they faked the reverse to Graham Mertz. Um, And by that, I mean Eugene Wilson took the snap with with Graham Mertz in the slot on the left. Eugene Wilson took the snap, ran to his left. Graham Mertz looped around like a reverse end around, whatever helps you visualize it, that he's looping behind them. And Eugene Wilson just took off running, almost scored. 
But and I, I know that I, I posted the video on Twitter and there were quite a few people that were like, why even do this against McNeese State? Like, this is when you want to get creative. You know why they did it against McNeese State? Because the first time they've ever done it, it worked. And they put it on film that, hey, this is in our playbook. That's an important part of just putting it on film so other teams know it's in your playbook. Because, and I've, I said this in my Discord, uh, in Lockdown Gators Discord, I, uh, I, I pinned it because I was like so confident that this is going to happen. I said in Lockdown Gators Discord, once the play happened, at some point later this year, could be Tennessee, could be LSU, could be Georgia, could be Florida State, could be a big game. Florida's going to give that same exact look pre-snap. Eugene Wilson is going to sweep left, pop it back to Graham Mertz. He's going to drop it back to Graham Mertz, and Graham Mertz is going to throw the ball. Okay? I'm letting you know that now, and I'm putting it on, on video now so that you know that, to me, that's something that I think is going to happen because that's what you do with a lot of those plays. A lot of those plays are just to show you, hey, we're willing to do this. It worked against McNeese State. We're willing to break it out again. And when we do break it out again, oops, little wrinkle to it that you were not prepared for. And granted, obviously, if I see the play and I immediately say that, people who get paid millions of dollars might also think that. But they might not. And so I think that building that kind of to just show teams, hey, this is in our playbook, and then add another wrinkle to it, and boom, big play. Like, they called it, what, in the 15 to 25-ish range? Imagine if you called it way back. Like, you called it on your own 30, and then you have Aiden Mizell running straight down that sideline could be a fun little thing to throw into the offense. So for me, I, I did enjoy seeing the play calling open up. Uh, we saw wide receiver screens. We also saw wide receiver screen fake where Eugene Wilson even jumped up to catch it because it was so high. And then Graham Mertz threw the ball downfield to Ricky Pearsall, who sold the block and then ran downfield and fake screen wheel. Stuff like that. Adding wrinkles to the offense is important. Just show teams, hey, this is in our arsenal. That's what you have to do. And that's what Florida's, they, they kind of started to do. They opened up the playbook a little bit. I will say on that fake screen wheel and on a couple other passes, Graham Mertz was throwing murder balls to Ricky Pearsall. Just homicide balls to Ricky Pearsall. Um, I don't know if it was, I, I have a theory. Graham Mertz is actually the most accurate passer of all time. He hates Ricky Pearsall. And he was leading Ricky Pearsall to those DBs to get him hit. Because I, I don't get it. Like, I feel like most of the day, Graham Mertz was spot on. Ricky Pearsall, just like high ball as the safety's coming in. Like, he did it a couple times, and it's very weird. Uh, also, there were some things on the offense that just sucked. I, I, do, I will say I feel bad for Dante Sanders because he got benched after last week. And then he came in against McNeese State, wide open for a touchdown right through his hands. And I get it. It was a little hot. He's a big dude. Like, he's got the catch radius to do that. So it just sucks to see that. Um, and that, that, yeah, that's just really, really unfortunate to see. But I will say most of the tight end play, solid. But I, I will tell you this. Listeners of this show, if you've been listening since I took over, or since Billy Napier got hired, I talked about a play that I love. I f one of my favorite plays in football, and it's not split zone read this time. Um, it's boot slide, which we saw in the spring game last year. We saw the spring game this year. We didn't see in the regular season last year. We saw against McNeese State, which is, it was Jonathan Odom starting on the left side of the line. They run the play fake, like little play action. Graham Mertz rolls to the right, 
And Jonathan Odom, after the snap, is also running to the right, right behind. Like, he doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. He stays behind the offensive line in the backfield, and he goes across and just into the flat, and it's just easy dump off, easy pitch and catch, a couple yards. That's it. But it's one of my favorite concepts because it just creates an easy completion for your quarterback, easy catch for your tight end, easy run for your tight end. And it's stuff like that where it's like, that's one of those passing plays where it's like, yeah, it's a passing play, but more of an extension of your running game in any way. Same way we talk about screens, just stuff like that. Getting guys the ball in space is an important part of football. It's very cool that that they brought out boot slide because, like I said, I love boot slide, so I love seeing it brought up. But offense, it was a great – like the, the starting offense scored every single time they were on the field. We'll talk about the depth later. Starting offense scored every single drive they were on the field. Sort of a touchdown every single time they were on the field. I'm not going to complain about it. No, it's Victory Monday. We're not complaining. Simple as that. We are about to talk about the defense, which also not too many complaints about. Defense balled out. Before we talk about the defense, though, football season is here. I don't know about you. Yesterday, it surprisingly made some money. Made some money. Week one usually sucks for me. Just going to be honest with you. Thursday last week sucked. Oh, my goodness. Thursday night football absolutely sucked. But last night better. Last night was better. So FanDuel, they're helping out. You bet new new users, $5, $200 in bonus bets. Okay? five You bet $5, new customers, get $200 in bonus bets. If you're not a new customer, and even if you are a new customer, bet $5, you get $100 off with YouTube TV Sunday ticket. What's there not to like about it? Right, FanDuel, I love you. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free right to listen to the podcast. I mentioned the Locked On Gators Discord before. I don't know why I'm pointing. Like, it's like, yeah, bro, right here. Just right, right, right in here. Um, I mentioned the Locked On Gators Discord before. Feel free to join. The link is in the description. Uh, everybody's welcome. We even have... I like Utah fan in there, or at least had. I feel like he's probably left after uh, after that last after the Thursday's game because yikes. But <laughs> Florida's defense, I will say, they were clean as hell for most of the game. There were a couple things like Prince Liamon Mielin had the uh, offside on. I think it was McNeese State's first drive. Uh, Prince Liamon, yeah, I think it was the first drive. Third and seven, Prince Liam Yellen jumped off. And then third and two for McNeese State. Prince Lee made the stop to force a fourth and three, fourth and four. And then McNeese State converted. But besides that penalty, I don't think Florida's defense, I don't think Florida's defense had another penalty the entire game. I'm pretty sure it was just that. Uh, there was a penalty on Austin Barber that, I, that was on the PAT at one point. And then Hayden Hansen had uh, illegal formation called on him. I think I think it was him that was lined up in the backfield. So defense, clean football game. And I will say also on that play, because you only see like gunslinging type of quarterbacks to do this. But when a defender jumps offside, a lot of quarterbacks that are gunslinger type, like you have like the Aaron Rodgers type, like guys like when someone jumps offside, they will throw the deep ball. Because they don't care. If they know you're offside, they know it's a free play completely. McNeese State's QB did that, and Jalen Kimber just blanketed the receiver completely and made a good play on the ball. So even when Princely screwed that up, great play by Jalen Kimber in the secondary. Like He played a lot. Good game. He played a good game out there. I will say for me, the biggest uh, improvement? Communication. I mentioned on in the postcast on Saturday night that against Utah on Thursday, last Thursday, there were so many times where Florida's defense was standing there looking at the sideline and just watching Austin Armstrong make the call, and they were just waiting for the call. So many times. I don't remember seeing that a single time against McNeese State. And McNeese State, like, they were going up-tempo, so it's not like 
that was the reasoning or anything like that. Like McNeese State was going up tempo. Um, so that's not really it was just communication was way better. Like thank thank goodness. Because McNeese State was going up tempo, calls were getting in fine. This week you play Tennessee, calls better get in fine because I promise you they're going up tempo. So for me, that that was like a huge thing where like the postcast after the Utah game, I was like, hey, um, you need to lock in. Like that's not that can't happen. And they did obviously that's not why they didn't lock in because i told them to they locked in because they know they had to but that was a big thing for me that i was like is this gonna be a problem with austin armstrong like is he a little too big for his britches here not the issue communication was fine against mcneese state you have to continue that you screwed it up in one game you were good in one game i'm not gonna say you're good just because you did it most recently needs to continue to be clean and constant okay Florida's linebackers, just if you're if you're watching, listen, give them a round of applause, give them a round of applause. Um, they deserve it. Scooby Williams and Shamar James, the best linebacker duo we've seen in a long time in Gainesville. And I know it's two games. I, I don't want to see seem like I'm jumping the gun here, but seriously, Shamar, we've known is incredibly talented. Scooby. I feel like he's come out of nowhere. Like last year, I remember the South Florida game. I was very hard on Scooby Williams, mostly for his lack of communication in the second level. He has been so vocal, like visibly vocal on the field during the games for Utah and McNeese State. And he's been flying to the ball. Like Scooby and Shamar, just like a dynamic duo at linebacker. It's fantastic linebacker duo. Best linebacker duo we've had in a very long time. Just truly, it's awesome. I, I I think that they both communicate pretty well, which I feel like last year we saw Ventrell communicate a lot, and that was kind of it. But here, Scooby and Shamar are both pre-snap. They're talking, they're moving, they're, they're communicating with other people. Like, they're going through it. it great linebacker play in Gainesville right now. Like, Jay Bateman, hell of a job. Manny Nunnery made a great, Manny Nunnery made a great play on... Uh, it, it was third down. I can't. It was third down, late third quarter maybe. And McNeese State had a running back on each side of the quarterback. They motioned one of the running backs out and snapped it as he was motioning. Which oftentimes when you see that, they're trying to get the ball to that guy because he's already moving. So they're trying to get the ball to him while he's got momentum built up and let him catch and run. Manny Nunnery identified that. I believe they were in man coverage. Manny Nunnery identified that he followed him when he went in motion and he like fired down because a lot, a lot of linebackers, they just like kind of move to the side and they just like go with you. And then when the ball's coming to you, they close in Manny Nunnery fired down, blew up the blocker and then ran right to the running back and completely took the running back out of the play. Like he didn't hit him obviously, but he took him out of the play. He was no longer a throwing option and QB kind of just stepped up. And I don't know if it was an official sack or not, but as he was getting wrapped up, he like reached forward right to the line of scrimmage. So I don't know if it was a sack or rush for no yards, but it was a great play is what it was. That's it. Um, also, Scooby on, on the sack he had, the first drive, I think that was the one that killed the drive. Um, he just came firing in. He was QB spy. The second QB rolled out, he just fired down. And it was like that that quick trigger stuff. That's hard to teach. Like that, that's instinct. And it's hard. It's like you can't teach it too much. Uh, so the linebackers, just the quick triggers, loved it. Uh, just absolutely loved it. Safety play for the Gators was much improved, although I will say there were like 42 plays or something like that for McNeese State. Limited opportunities. McNeese State didn't do much downfield. It was hard to really truly judge them, but they did their jobs. Okay. They came down, they made plays, they did their jobs. Uh, Bryce Thornton, true freshman stepped in. He was playing star. He was like another like quick trigger. I remember there was a run. He shot right between, I think it was the left tackle and the tight end. And he just came down and made the play, made the hit, made the stop. And it was a great play by Bryce Thornton as well. Like the freshman ball, which we're, we're going to talk more about the freshman in just a second. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to talk to you guys about Athletic Brewing Co. Because 
Now, it's time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. I'm going to say, much like Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne to the Florida Gators rushing attack, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. Okay? But how did Florida, how did Montreal and Trevor Etienne change for Florida? They actually gave them the football and it worked. Oh my God. Who would have ever thought that one? Athletic Brewing Company, how'd they change it? They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Ridiculous. I'm not going to slap myself again for that, but ridiculous. They make non-alcoholic beers that taste good, like full flavor, well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer, non-alcoholic. They're constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to their variety, which hopefully we will continue to add new ways to get Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne in the football. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On to get 15% off your first order. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. And Florida's freshman played a ton against McNeese State. Max Brown saw his first snaps, um, handed it off the first, like, four plays, and I was just sitting here like, dude, he's got a howitzer arm. Like, let's see him throw it. And he did eventually. Uh, he rolled right, had uh, Aiden Mizell running the crosser, threw it to Aiden Mizell. And like, I feel like he, like, just, I feel like there was a stark difference in how fast Graham Mertz threw a ball to how fast Max Brown threw a ball. Like, Graham Mertz is like, yep, like, soft. It's going to be e- easy catch. Like, you don't have to hurt your hands. You don't have to worry about that. And Max Brown's just like, no curveball, no changeup, just Yes, and like that's how he's gonna throw the ball at you, and it's great. Hopefully, there are certain times where he gets a little more touch on it. But it, that was a great ball to Aiden Mizell. It was great to see Max Brown's first pass attempt be Aiden Mizell's first pass catch. Like that, that was fun to see. Seeing Aiden Mizell get a little bit of run. We saw Arliss Boardingham play on Saturday. Uh, I know. It, I will say this: Arliss Boardingham a few times lined up in the backfield. And it was pretty fun to see. Uh, he was lined up basically like fullback, but ways to get him on the field and get him just involved in the game plan, get him open. Because when he came out in that set, if I'm not mistaken, this was the Dante Sanders missed touchdown. Was Graham Mertz in the backfield? I don't remember the running back behind him. Uh, Might have been Trayon Webb. Arliss Boardingham to the left of Graham Mertz. Dante Sanders at tight end. I don't remember who the receiver was, but it was play action fake. Graham Merce is rolling to the right. He's got Dante Sanders open in the back of the end zone. He throws to Dante Sanders. But even then, you have Arliss Wardingham running a little slider out with Graham Mertz. He had the check down if he wanted it, but you have Dante Sanders there open in the back of the end zone. So he he took that pass. It was a good decision. Like good decision. I understand it was a little high. Dante Sanders is a big dude. He should have caught that ball. Also, by the way. Florida scored a touchdown in 14 personnel. And I feel bad that I, I did a postcast and I didn't mention it. And now I'm about 22 minutes, 23 minutes into recording this. And I haven't mentioned it yet. And I'm offended by myself. Like 14 personnel, one running back, four tight ends. Florida scored a touchdown on that. That's sick. Like that's just, there's no other way to say That's sick. That's awesome. Like that's psychopath behavior. And I love it. Uh, Trayon Webb got a lot of work. Trayon Webb impressed me just because I feel like he had, like, I feel like he expl- he uh, displayed more wiggle than I was used to seeing from him when watching his high school stuff. And, like, he had solid, but I feel like he, like, th- the screen pass, for example. Trayon Webb motioned out of the backfield. He went into the slot to a bunch set, caught the screen, immediately made a man miss, and then ran after that for a solid gain. And it was just like, okay, all right, you got a little bit of wiggle to your game. That's a little fun because, again, wiggle in high school is different from wiggle in college, wiggle in the SEC, wiggle in the NFL. Because a lot of times in high school, you just out-athlete people. Granted, could have out-athleted them against McNeese State, but a lot of times high school to college is way different. High school, you just out-athlete them. College, you got to play football. 
you can't just be an athlete. And so it was fun to see Trayon Webb get work in the running game. He got plenty of work in the run game. Made quite a few men miss. I don't remember any times off the top of my head of him really like missing a rushing lane when he or, or like if he did miss a rushing lane. I don't think it ever hurt the team at all. Getting involved as a pass catcher there it was fun to see. Like Trayon Webb played well. I don't expect him to be as heavily involved in the game plan moving forward just because, you know, you get to Tennessee, Kentucky, SC, Georgia, LSU, Arkansas, all those games. I'd imagine you're going to go, okay, well, Trevor jo- Trevor uh, Etienne and Montreal Johnson are the main guys that we're going to give the football here. But Trey Onway can still play. He's just not going to get however many carries it was. What was it? 12 carries or however involved he was in the game plan um you're, you're not going to see that from him because you're going to be giving the ball to the other backs uh trying have had 14 carries yeah you're not going to see that as often um all this boarding hand playing and myself playing andy gene got got reps today uh, or got reps on saturday uh second quarter he came in like there was a ton of freshmen defensively I mentioned Bryce Thornton before it was easily for me, the most impressive true freshman uh, against run defense there. Didn't really see much of Jaden Robinson at linebacker. TJ Searcy is a freak. Sorry. TJ Searcy is the most impressive against run defense. Cause Holy crap. TJ Searcy is a dude. Like, he is a dude on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Bryce Thornton's still great play, but yeah, TJ Searcy is the dude on the edge. Uh, Jakeem Jackson at corner had two deflected passes on the same drive, if I'm not mistaken. And one of them was like an athletic play too. Like this 2023 class is athletic as hell. And it's fun because like we haven't had that in Gainesville, but now we do. And I'm going to be excited. And it's important to note, like I wish that you went to the freshman earlier if you were Florida just because the only way to get experience is to get experience. And I say that all the time. And I feel like every year we're like a lot of inexperienced guys coming out here. So I think the only way to get experience is to get experience. So do that against McNeese state. If you can separate from Charlotte early, which Charlotte is not a game that I'm expecting to be like 49 to seven, but if you could separate from Charlotte and get these guys in a little bit more, That'd be awesome too. But thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free reviews in the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators football for Lockdown Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports, Giants Country, NFL 33. And I'll see you all tomorrow.